Okay, we haven't done a chess piece for a while, so let's tackle the queen. It's hard to get the queen wrong, it's a really simple topology. But, to create it in a subdivision surface way, we need to think about the weight of the geometry at every point. So, the queen generally has 8 points around her crown. It evaluates to us needing 32 vertices to correctly and efficiently describe this shape. The problem is that we are then required to have this tiny detail on top. That's a huge weight of geometry for something so small, when what you really want is something like this. So how do we do it without ending up with n-gons? We need to use something called radial connection reduction. We like to work in multiples of 8, and you should always bear that in mind when you're making your objects. 8, 16, 32 work really well. The method is exactly the same between all of them. So I'll just delete the default cube, press Shift and A, add a mesh, circle. And I'm just going to leave it at 32 vertices. I'll zoom in a little, tab to edit mode, press E to extrude, S to scale, and maybe do that again, E, S, and scale it in. I'm just going to tab back to object mode. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to this and set it to shade smooth and tab back into edit mode. So we have this surface with a hole ready to be modeled or connected to something else. You may want to extrude this up, so I'll just press E and Z to extrude it up. I'll just extrude another loop and scale it in and then I'll go to face grid fill just to seal it off. I'll add some loops here just to tighten everything up and we end up with this shape. Now you'll see that the topology is all good. It's all quads and all the vertices on the edges have four spoke poles. So on paper it's fine, but it's heavy. It has many more vertices than it needs. This extrusion could be a cable snaking off all over the place. And you'll end up with tens of thousands of vertices which are just not needed. So what can we do? Let me just undo this until we get back to our surface. And now with this inner loop selected, I'm just going to move it back a bit. I can go up and choose select and check it deselect, which deselects every other vertice. Now, if I press X and choose Dissolve Vertices, it'll get rid of all of the selected vertices, but leave this loop connected with all the remaining vertices. And now this loop has only 16 vertices rather than 32. And that's great, but it's left us with lots of n-gon faces. In fact, every single face in this ring of faces here is an n-gon with five edges. And that's not good. So how can we make them quads? Well, there is a method which is the same no matter what the vertex counts are in the loops you're transitioning between. If I select one of the points on the outside of the two loops that does not have an edge running away from it, and then I shift and select the point at the other end of the edge next to it, and then move back up to the next point along, I can press J to join these. Now, I want to miss a vertex out and do the same with the next three points. Select all three, join, and then miss a vertex and do it again. Miss an edge, do it again. Miss a vertex, do it again. So now the n-gons have gone, but we're left with lots of triangles. But these pairs of triangles are all separated by one edge, which makes them really easy to get rid of. There are lots of ways to do this. I could go around selecting each edge and dissolving them, or I can just go up to the menus and say select, select all by trait, faces by sides, turn off extend, and change the number of vertices to three. And that will just leave us with all of the triangles selected. If I now press X and say dissolve faces, all of those triangles will be converted into quads. So that's it, everything is quads, but we have a much lighter geometry on the inside loop. If I alt and click to select this loop, press E and scale it down, then we can repeat the process from before. Press E and Z to scale it up, E and S, and then choose face and grid fill, add our control loops, and we'll see, we have exactly the same shape as before, but now the area above it is a much lighter geometry. It's now half the weight it was before, and if we had many shapes like this to create, or a long detailed shape like a cable, then we can save ourselves many, many vertices. In fact, as you may know, 8 is the perfect count for a cylindrical shape in Blender, so we could reduce this one even further using the same method. Let me go back, and in point select mode, I'm going to go to select, check a deselect, press X and say dissolve vertices, select one of the points on the outer loop that doesn't have an edge running away from it, connect it as before to the point at the bottom of the edge next to it, and then back up to the next point along. Miss one vertex out, and do the same again. Miss a vertex out, do the same again. Miss a vertex out, and do the same again. Then go to select, select all by trait, faces by sides, remember the settings we had before, so we can just simply press X, and dissolve faces. And now we have this loop here, which only has eight vertices. And if I scale that in, we can extrude that up in Z, press E, and scale, face, and grid fill, Add our tightening loops. Again, we have exactly the same shape we did before. 
but now our shape on the top is very light, as light as it can reasonably be. And it's all quads, so I can add uh, modifiers to it. I could add a simple deform. Well, that looks like a hat. Maybe I could make it into a hat by uh, adding another simple deform. I just taper it off in Z and add a solidify modifier to that. And select this point here and move it down a bit just to give our hat a bit of a dip. Select that, move it up, extrude them along their normals. Insert that to tighten that up. Press Ctrl and Plus just to select some more of those so I can move that to a good position. I've got an urge to colour it in, so I'm going to go up here, go to Materials and give it a new material. Dark brown. Maybe the hat band. Oh, look, I can just add another uh, material for that. Let's make that black. <laughs> there we go. And I can still model with it. Uh, it it's, a, it's a pretty nice light hat, actually. Oh, go on, I'll just give it a, a quick bump map. Add a noise texture. Plug that into the height. <laughs> Good. What about our other material? Let's do the same thing there. Add a bump map. Add a noise texture. Add into the height. Scale that up to make it look a little bit more leathery. Maybe that one's a bit strong. <laughs> you know, it's a good hat. It has 169 vertices. So that's good and light. I can imagine that flapping around in the wind, falling down onto a dusty path. Anyway, we're not really here to make hats. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I got a bit carried away with that. We're here to talk about connecting things or modeling things with different vertice counts. So let's get back to that. I'm just going to undo, uh, well, everything until we get back to uh, something sensible. Right back down to our grid. And I may as well show you that we can reduce it down to four. So go ahead and select, check it, deselect, X, dissolve vertices, select one of these that doesn't have an edge coming out of it, connect it to this and this, join, miss one out, connect these ones. There's only two to do when it's a square. Well, this time I am just going to dissolve the edges between the triangles because there's not much to do. And we've reduced it down to four. Now, the problem with going to four is that we often end up with this face here which is a concave polygon, and we don't like those. And I would normally use a modifier called the Smooth Laplacian, but uh, in this case, I can just select it, scale it down until this quad's not concave anymore. You need a lot more space going down from eight to four than you do for the others. But again, I can scale that down, extrude that up, add our loops, and we end up with almost the same topology. Four vertices doesn't quite make a circle. You can go from eight down to four. It can be useful. And the topology we've ended up with does look a little bit complicated, but the methods were simple. And it's a fairly common task. Now, let's get back to our queen. Let's just start a new scene. Now, as with the other pieces, I'm going to quickly add a reference image. So I'll just delete the default cube. I'll press 1 on the number pad to switch to the front view, because that's where we'll use our reference. I'll press Shift and A, go to Image, Reference. So find my image and open that. I'll press F2 straight away to rename it Queen reference. I'm going to go to the object data properties over here and I'm going to change the Y to zero, the depth to front, just so that it's always in front of everything. Change it to only axis align so it's only visible in the front view. Change the opacity to 0.5. I'm going to make it unselectable. Actually it looks a little off-center so I'm just going to move it along a tiny bit. Now I'd normally show you what people do wrong at this point and then delete it after telling you it's rubbish. But for the Queen, there are so many bad methods flying around that it's hard to know where to start. Starting from the bottom of the piece, extruding things in the wrong directions, five spoke poles, UV spheres, unconnected geometry, all of those things are commonly used. So instead of showing you the bad methods, I'm just going to show you three methods that are good. Now, as you might have seen me do before, I'm going to start with the head of the piece and that'll drive the resolution of the shape below it. We need uh, a mesh circle and we're going to leave it at its default 32 vertices. So I'll switch to my front view, I'm going to move it up to where the head starts, tap into edit mode, scale it down. I think my reference is still off-center, so I'm just going to quickly move that across, select our circle, and just I'm going to extrude that up in Z to about halfway, scale it out to match the flare of the crown, extrude again, and scale that up, round about there, again just to match the curvature of the crown. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to tab to object mode, add a subdivision surface modifier, and set it to shade smooth. Now, because I'm going to show you three methods, I'm going to take two copies of this object. I'm just going to press Shift and D and move that along by two, and then Shift and D and move that along by two, just so I've got three of these to work on. Let's focus on the first one. 
tab to edit mode. Now the first thing I'm going to do is press A to select everything and change our tool to extrude along normals. This little yellow circle appears which we can just pull and that will extrude everything in along their normals. And very importantly what that's done is create a 90 degree angle between this edge and this edge. That means any movement of any of these faces along their normals, which is how we're going to move them, will effectively travel along these edges, keeping good continuity of our shape. And now if I switch to face select mode and alt click within this ring of faces to select them all and notice that we have one active face and that's very important because whatever the active face is, we can always consider to be the very first one selected when we use checker deselect, which we're going to do now. Checker deselect is a really powerful tool in modeling. We use it a lot. So I can quickly go to checker deselect and specify that I want three deselected spaces and then one selected. But you notice that doesn't work. This gap here has five spaces and that's because the offset is set to zero and leaving the offset at zero in the checker deselect tool just simply doesn't work. It always has to be set to minus one. It doesn't matter what these two numbers are here, the offset needs to be minus one. Zero does not work, so bear that in mind. In fact, now is a good time to tell you that any time these two numbers here, deselected and selected, are set to the same thing, check it deselect also doesn't work. You'll notice that only one face here is selected and it doesn't matter what we set the offset to, it just won't ever work. If you ever need to have a gap of two and then a selection of two, you're going to have to go around and do it by hand. Somebody needs to take a look at that really. But we need to have three deselected, one selected, and our offset, as I said, always needs to be minus one. Now we want to move these faces up, but it's not really possible to do it by eye. If you do that along the z-axis, then all of the outside topology ends up strange and then you'll see people trying to scale it along x and y and the faces are getting bigger and you can't quite guarantee that this whole surface has continuity because you've tried to move everything by eye. So I'll just undo that. What we need is for the faces to move along their normals. That's the vector that points straight out of a face. And to do that we need to change the transform orientation to normal mode. Now I see a lot of people trying to do this and then giving up because uh, things don't quite move in the direction they hope and that is always because they don't have individual origins selected. Normal transform orientation and individual origins go together as a pair. They almost always go together. There are a more advanced techniques which we will cover later where that's not true but 99% of the time if you have normal selected you need to have individual origins selected at the same time. Now when I press G to translate the faces and press Z to constrain them to their Z axis, they'll all have their own individual Z axis based on their normal. So when I move them, they'll slide up and down in exactly the direction we would hope. Each face has its own axis with the normal pointing out of its face. Now I'm probably going to want to change these faces again, so I'm going to left click to confirm that I want them there, but I'm going to press Ctrl and G and assign them to a new vertex group. And I'm just going to rename this group the points. So with these selected, I can scale them along any of their axes. Maybe I would want to make them narrow along their local X axes, or I can scale the size of them individually along their local Y axes to make the points a little sharper. And because we have this vertex group selected, we can always just select them at any point to make these changes. So as I said, it's really important that you're using individual origins when you're in normal mode. And notice that when I do move them in either Z, X or Y, the lines change color. Now I normally like to use one of the matte caps and I often choose the white shiny one to get a good feel for how your model reacts to light. And that's the important quality you're looking for when modeling, so I'll switch to that. Now I can do the same with the faces in between the points to shape those. If I press Alt and click in face select mode to select the whole ring, and again choose checker deselect, it'll remember the settings from last time and it'll choose all of the faces correctly. I can now press G and Z and maybe move those down. Scale them along their Y axes to sharpen up our points a little. I'll give these in between curves a little thickness just to add some interest to our shape. And I probably want to make a vertex group out of that as well. And call this one, what are they, the dips, I'll call them. So now when I have nothing selected, I can just quickly reselect my points and play with those. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that. But you've got a lot of freedom to make lots of different shapes with these points now. And this is a good simple method to get the spikes of the crown. We haven't extruded any new geometry, so there are no five spoke poles to worry about. And it looks nice. I could add a loop around the outside to give it a, a really nice kind of hard shell on the outside. And soft in the inside. It's a good simple method. So let's move on to the next one. This one I'm going to start modeling before we extrude it. And this method's good for slightly sharper points. So in point select mode, 
Make sure the entire top ring is selected. Remember, whichever vertex is active is going to be one of the ones that are selected after the checker deselect. So we'll go to checker deselect. And it'll remember our settings from last time. And because the topology is the same, then it'll select them correctly. Now, we could use the normal and individual origins and, and move them along an axis. It turns out to be Y this time. Because vertices have normals too, and they're pointing away from the edge they're attached to. But vertex normals aren't quite as predictable as edge and face normals, so we'll use edge slide instead. Because what we need to do is push them all along their existing edges in order to maintain our shape. So if I press GG to go to edge slide mode, you can see that I can slide down. But some of the vertices, if you, if you have a look at this one over here as I do it, or any of them, they keep changing, will actually go along a horizontal edge rather than a vertical edge. And it depends on where you have the mouse, it's all quite random. The way to fix this is to make sure you're in one of the orthographic views. I'm just going to switch to the front view and press GG there. Now they'll all slide in the same direction. And if I press Alt, I can slide them outside of the range of their edge. So I'm just going to move these up to here. Left click to confirm. And we have this shape. Now I can do the same for the dips. So let's Alt and select the whole loop by clicking on one of the edges that you want to remain selected. Go to check it, deselect. It'll select the correct vertices all the way around. Switch to the front view, press GG, and they'll all slide down. Now, if I move my mouse too far to the left or right, it'll change which edge it's considering. And to stop it doing that, again, we want to press Alt, and that will lock it to that direction, no matter where we move the mouse. So I'm just going to move that down to there, left click to confirm, and we have this shape. It looks pretty good. I can now use a really interesting property of the proportional editing tool to change our shape. If I Alt and click to select our entire ring again, with one of the points as an active vertex, go to check a deselect to select just the points. I should have probably made them a vertex group, but this is fine too. It's very quick. You can see that the transform pivot point is still set to individual origins. And I'm going to press S to scale. And obviously, that doesn't do anything. The points are attempting to get bigger around their own centers. And they're just points, so nothing can happen. But if I first turn on proportional editing, while I'm scaling these points around their own centers, and scroll my mouse wheel down, when I press scale, the unselected points will actually be scaled in towards the selected points if that makes sense. Our selected points will stay in the same place as usual, but now the surrounding points will start to move and we can tighten up these points that way. Just scaling a single point with proportional editing turned on is a great way to change shapes. And if I orbit around, that looks good. Now I want to give the wall some thickness, which I'll do by selecting everything, change to extrude along normals, and just pull the little yellow circle until we get some thickness to our crown. And we can see that the fidelity of our shape is, is good. All the curvature works really well. And you can now use this stage of the mesh to reshape it in lots of ways. We can use the same proportional editing trick with edges around the top selected. To do that, we need to select one of the edges on a point, And I need to select all of the other edges inside this ring. And to do that, I go to Select, Select Loops, and Edge Rings. And that just selects all of the lines in between the edges. Again, I can use Checker Deselect. And with our settings, it will select just the points. And again, with individual origins and, and normal selected, I can press S and then X. And I can actually scale the two points either side of our selected edge to change our shape. And of course, I can still scale these along any other axes. Again, I might want to add a loop just to tighten up the very outside of the shell. And that's nice. Again, simple. We can get sharper points with this one. There are lots of things we could play with here, but I like that. So let's move on to our third version. And this one's probably actually the most useful because it adds extra geometry and allows you to shape the points of the curve even further. So if I tab into edit mode, I'm going to do the same with this one as I did with the first one. I'm going to select everything, make sure I'm using extrude along normals, pull the circle in a little way to create this 90 degree angled ring of faces around the top. I'm going to switch to face select mode. I'm going to alt and click in this ring to select the whole thing. Use our checker deselect, which will select the correct arrangement for us. And this time, I'm going to pull this little yellow circle to extrude them out along their normals, which makes these little bumps. Now, what you'll see is I've made these five spoked poles, which we talked about when we were making the rook, and they're adversely affecting our shape. So I'll show you what I didn't show you when we were making the rook. I'll show you how to fix these after they've been extruded. I'm just going to shape this a little, and again, because I'm in normal and individual origins, everything will work as before. I'm going to turn off proportional editing for now, and just scale these. First along their X, then maybe along their Y, just to narrow them to points. I feel like having them quite sharp. And then I'm going to alt and click in the middle with one of the faces in between as the active face. Check it, deselect. And this time it hasn't selected the correct faces. And that's because these extrusions added two extra faces around each point. So we need to add those two into our check it, deselect. And if we make that five, it'll now select all of the correct edges. And I can just press G and move them down perhaps to shape our point, maybe maybe scale those out a little just to change the curve, maybe make them a little wider so that we have this interesting kind of widening in the middle. 
And now's a good time to fix these five spoked poles. And the way we do that is in face select mode to select the entire ring. It doesn't matter which face is active for this. And I'm going to press Ctrl and I to invert the selection, which means literally everything else on the mesh is selected except for our top ring. Let me just change to on cage. And maybe we'll be able to see that a little more clearly. Everything else is selected except for this ring around the top. And if I now press I to inset, we'll get an inset which effectively pushes all of the five and three spoked poles onto the edges of our mesh. Which gives us a really good hard edged outer shell. I want to just turn on proportional editing and, and move these back a little. And I still have all of the opportunities I need to adapt my shape by selecting loops and check and deselect. Everything's affected symmetrically. And if I turn this off and show you that our five spoke poles have now been pushed back to here and our edge poles are all natural poles or four spoke poles. The same with the three spoke poles on the top. Everything on the top now has four edges and everything in the internal corners has four edges. That means light will flow over our surfaces correctly. Our topology is good and because we have these extrusions, we could now use this extra geometry to curve these points around. So we have these three shapes. I'm probably going to use this one for our next stage. But they're all, all quads and none of them have three or five spoke poles on any edge. However, for now, we can delete both of these. They're rubbish. I'm going to move this one back to where our reference lives. Focus on it and we can start thinking about how we create the detail in the center. If we look at our reference, we can see it's kind of a dome in there with a shape on top. So let's try to create that. Okay, so if I tab into edit mode and face select mode, I'm going to start by deleting this ring of faces on the very bottom. We don't need it. This is going to become the body eventually, so we can delete that. And then I'm going to switch to edge select mode. I'll click on this bottom loop and just press GG to slide it up to kind of where I want my dome to begin. Now with this loop selected, I'm going to press E to extrude, S to scale and type 0.05. I want to scale it almost to the center, but leave this hole in the middle. Now I am just going to switch back to studio lighting so we can see a little more clearly what's going on. And I want to give this enough resolution to model with. So I'm going to press Ctrl and R and hover over this area until this ring appears. And I can either scroll the mouse wheel to add more, but I'm just going to type 10 to add 10 loops. We'll get rid of some of them later. And I'm going to right click to leave them in place. Now I want to select just this loop on the very inside. So Alt click and select that. And now I want to turn proportional editing on either by clicking it or just pressing O. And I want to change the type to sphere. And now when I press G and Z, I can move this loop up and all of the vertices around it will become a sphere. You may need to scroll your wheel until just the vertices you want are selected and just move it up a distance. If you see your entire mesh moving up and down as you move your mouse, then your circle is probably just huge. So scroll the mouse wheel up until you see it all work. Now, if I focus on this and just change to point select mode, you can see I have these vertices and there are 32 of them in here. Now, of course, I could just use all of these and either connect them to another shape with 32 vertices or just extrude them up to create a shape. But that is a lot of vertices and a lot of vertices are hard to work with. So this would be a good candidate for radial connection reduction. So now I'm going to press O to turn proportional editing off. I'm going to press GG just to slide these vertices back a little way. I'm going to press E to extrude new loop and S to scale and just move that in a little way. It doesn't really matter how far. And now I'm going to go through the same process that I showed you earlier on when I ended up making that uh, hat. I'm just going to press W to turn that yellow circle off and change it back to normal select mode. Now again, I'm going to use check and deselect. It's had a good workout this session. I'm going to reset all the values to one, one, and I'll leave that at minus one. And now that we have this checkered selection, I'm just going to press X and choose Dissolve Vertices. And you saw me do this earlier. I'm going to connect these points. I'm going to start with one of the points that doesn't have an edge running away from it. I'm going to select the point at the bottom of the edge next to it and then go back up to the next point along and press J to join them. I'm going to miss the vertex out and do the same again. Connect these three points, press J. Miss the vertex out, connect these three points, press J. Miss a point out, connect these three points, press J, and I'm going to keep doing that until I've gone all the way around the circle. It'll work out perfectly and we'll have exactly the same arrangement all around the circle. And as we see, that gets rid of all the end gons, but now we have triangles. And this time I'm going to show you an even quicker way to get rid of the triangles. If we alt and click on the inside loop to select it and press Ctrl and plus on the number pad to select all of the faces which make up our ring, I can go to face, tries to quads, and I can change the maximum shape angle to its maximum is fine, 180 degrees. And you'll notice that all of the triangles have instantly been converted into quads. And that's a much quicker method of doing that. I used the other method last time just to give you more information, really. So now I can select this inner loop as normal. 
and it only has 16 vertices, but we can go further. So let's uh, extrude again and scale down a new loop. Go to check it, deselect. It'll remember the settings from last time. So I can just press X and dissolve those vertices. I'm going to go around connecting these three points, starting with a vertex that doesn't have an edge running away from it. Press J to join. Miss out a vertex, do the same again. Join, miss out a vertex, do the same again. Join, and then a last time, miss out a vertex. Select the three of them and press J to join. Alt and click on this inner loop. Press Ctrl and plus to select the entire ring. And again, go to face, tries to quads. It remembers the settings from last time, so they're just instantly gone. And now we have this loop with only eight vertices in it. So if I scale down a new loop, we are ready to create a nice low resolution detail on top. I could either attach it to a very lightweight object, which I don't think we've gone over, but that's actually very simple. And I will go over that in another tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to extrude a, a loop up and uh, another one, scale that out, extrude that up. And then I'm just going to select grid fill and maybe move that up in Z just to create our shape with a detail on top. Maybe it's a little small. With the top point selected, press Control plus a few times. I'm going to scale that up and then maybe move it up in Z. Select that loop, move that up a little. That looks fine. Let's just check it against our reference. Oh, and it's too low, actually. So what I would do there is I just select the, the top point and again, turn on proportional editing with sphere, with G and Z and move the whole lot up. And that's great. Now I probably have too many loops around here. I don't need all of those. So I'm just going to shift alt and click a few of those, press X and uh, dissolve those edges. And that looks great. That looks like the head of a queen. So I'm just going to switch to the front view, tab to edit mode. I'm going to select the bottom row vertices and just start extruding down the body. And I'm pretty happy with that. We could, uh, as we did with the Rook, use lattice modifiers and deformers and change it any way we want. Lots of opportunities to shape it and, and match your reference because the topology is really solid. I just want my best to look a little like the others, so I'm going to go straight down here. And don't forget that the bottom two loops need to be only translated and the last two loops need to be only scaled. I can then go to face and grid fill as usual. I just rotate the offset so that it sits around my axis properly. I always like to do that. And then I'm just going to switch to the front view again and take a look at that. And I think the dome needs to start a little higher. So I'm just going to turn on on cage to have a look at that. Spin around. I'm going to select this top point here and just press Control and plus until everything down to here is selected. Turn on proportional editing and I'm just going to move that up in Z, scroll the mass wheel down and maybe something like that. I'm just going to take this loop here without proportional editing on. So I'm just going to press O. I'm going to scale that up a little. Now I did say we could model these points further, maybe curl them around because of the extra geometry they have because of the extrusion. So if I switch to face select mode and again, just odd click this loop and use our checker deselect again, it'll remember the settings. So it'll just select all of the faces on the points. I want to turn on proportional editing and change to smooth interpolation. If I now press R and make my circle very small and rotate them around their X axes, all of their individual X axes. And as I rotate them around, we can see that they rotate. But if I increase the size of the circle, you see that it starts to encompass more and more of the edge. And as I rotate them, I can actually curve these points out a little. I don't want to do it too much, just something uh, to add a bit of interest. So something like that will probably do. That looks quite nice. And I've just noticed that I haven't renamed my uh, object. It's still called circle 002. So I need to uh, press F2 and call that queen. Very important. So I think I'm very happy with that. I think that looks great. The only things left to do, tab into edit mode and point select mode. Select this point on the very bottom. I think the cursor is already there, but just to check, I'll press shift and S and say cursor to selected. Tab back to object mode, right click and say set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now I need to make a real world size. So I'll make it, uh, I'm going to make this nine centimeters and then I'm going to hover over the Z scale, press control and C and then hover over both the X and Y, pressing control and V as I go. I'll just focus on the object. I'm going to set, I'm going to reset all the locations, press control and A and apply all transforms. Maybe, maybe we didn't need to use the reduction technique on the top, but I thought it'd be useful to show you how and where these things are actually used rather than just blindly showing you how to connect a lot of circles. Only two pieces to go now. One simple with the king, which people still manage to get wrong, and one very interesting one with the knight. As usual, I'll probably drift off for a video or two to cover some missing techniques, but I'll get back to the pieces soon, I promise, as there's a lot to learn from them both. And I hope you enjoyed this one.